Now, I know you necessarily haven't had the most fun relationship with probability and statistics so far, but we're going to do so much recapping. And what happened last year is people found statistics like the hardest bit simply because they hadn't spent any time on it. Just like with mechanics, mechanics was something that you didn't like, and now lots of people feel positive about mechanics as well. The other thing is, on average, students last year, they did very well in their mechanics. They did even better in statistics, OK? So they did even better in statistics. So I think lots of things that we'll be doing this year will kind of uh, really solidify some of these ideas that we've got here. So as I said before, we're going to spend a few lessons on probability. We'll do some recapping on some of the year 12 stuff, but that's going to be quite fast. And then we're going to be doing some more hypothesis testing kind of stuff as well, OK? You'll get the idea of hypothesis testing this time. You will. <coughs> there should be, I'd put six on that table, so I think there should be enough. No? There's loads of those. I'll go and get some booklets then. Okay, so the things we're going to be doing, we'll remind ourselves about what set notation is and how we can use set notation. We are also going to be having a look at, like, yeah, I did give them out right. I thought I did. Uh, Venn diagrams. But the new thing that we'll be having a look at here is something called conditional probability. Now, conditional probability is how things tend to work in the real world, where if one thing changes, the probability of that thing changes as well. A bit like the weather, that if it was rainy today, that's going to change whether it might be rainy tomorrow. The events of raining are not independent from each other. Whether it, if it didn't rain one day, it will change the probability whether it will rain or not rain the next day. And that kind of makes sense with how the weather should be behaving. But um, things that are not conditional, things that are like unconditional or independent, would maybe be things like rolling a dice. If you roll a dice and you get a one on it, it doesn't change the probability the next time you roll the dice whether you're going to get a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, or a six. Humans kind of think that way. You think if you've rolled a six, oh, I'll never get a six again. But the dice doesn't think that way. The dice will just always be random each time, OK? So this is what we mean by conditional probability. We'll then be thinking about some more sophisticated formulae that we have. So it's really important we understand all of this set notation that we have here. And then we'll be applying this to some kind of like tree diagram type questions. But really, you'll find tree diagrams are not as useful as perhaps we use them in GCSE. You'll find that the most useful tool that we use in probability are going to be Venn diagrams and these formulae. Tree diagrams we sometimes use. So it's still useful for us to kind of look over those bits as well. So I'm going to recap some of the idea of what set notation actually is. Um, this is stuff from GCSE, but it's still worth us mentioning this because it's got some sophisticated kind of language that we may use. So in general, a set or sets are used to represent collections of items, exactly how you'd expect the word set to behave. It means a group of items that we've got. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes. When I say an outcome, I mean like raining, not raining. Rolling a one on a dice, not rolling a one on a dice. Being left-handed, being right-handed. These are all things that are possible outcomes. Um, we use this curly letter, and this is the Greek letter xi, um, or sometimes we just use the letter s to represent this set. And we use a rectangle in a Venn diagram. So you have to make sure if you're asked to draw a Venn diagram that you draw a rectangle to represent what is the whole universal set that you are looking at here. Um, the two subsets that we've got here are E and P. So you have a dice rolling an even number, and P is rolling a prime number. And I've said here, in probability, an event is a set of one or more outcomes. And these are the circles in the Venn diagram. We use capital letters for the variables representing sets. So you'll have noticed when you've done Venn diagrams in GCSE, it's always been capital letters for those sets that we have there. And in this particular representation that I've got here, each number represents an outcome on the dice. You'll see some Venn diagrams where the numbers that you have in here represent a frequency of how many things are in that area of the Venn diagram, or a probability of what's the probability of getting something in that area of, in, of the Venn diagram. But here, they just represent uh, the actual outcome. So why is 2 in the intersection? it's both even and prime. And one is on the outside, neither prime nor even. Three is in that section because 
it's prime and not even. So as long as we know how to describe these, uh, these areas on a Venn diagram, they allow us to like classify things and put them in groups in a, in a really kind of interesting way. So we've just gone through some of these bits that we've got here. It's the same Venn diagram that we had on the previous page. Um, I just want to talk about some of the formal language here because I'm going to be using this formal language and it's important that you understand what it is that I'm talking about when I say these things, okay? So you will have come across this um, information before. It means not A. When you have A with a dash next to it, it means it is not A. But the language that we use for that, I probably will say not A, we call it the complement of A. So in this particular case, where A is an even number and B is a prime number, the complement of A is 1, 3, 5. It's the odd numbers. We have this idea of A, U, B. Um, and this is what we out loud would say A or B. But actually, it's called the union of A and B. The union of A and B is this kind of like... This kind of like figure of eight shape that we see for the union of A and B. I'll kind of draw that next to this. So you, when you see that, that's what you should be thinking of for the union of A and B. The way I remember union of A and B is I think of it like a union, like a marriage. OK, imagine this is all the stuff that A has. This is all the stuff that B has. And this is the stuff that they share. But when you get married, everything becomes shared, OK? Everything becomes shared. All of your belongings, all of your family, all of their family is a single union together. So that's one way of helping us to remember A, U, B is both of those sections together. We then have A, A un B, or A and the intersection of B is how we would say this. This literally means the things that are A and B. Um, so in this context, it's rolling a number which is even and prime. It's that kind of middle overlapping section is the intersection. And that's just the stuff that they share, the stuff that's happening at the same time. So in this case, the set is just two. Then we can get some more complicated things in these pairs here. Yes, Sadia? You sure? Yeah. Okay. You can then get A and not B. So this is saying it's A and it's the intersection of A and the complement of B. That's the kind of posh way of saying that, the intersection of A and the complement of B. So this case, it's saying that it is going to be in A, which is an even number, but it's not going to be in B. And when you think about that, it will be this kind of moon section. And it's just the numbers four and six that belongs for those parts that you've got there, right? We can use brackets to help us to describe things as well, because brackets are always really useful in maths. So this one is saying, we kind of, I, I would probably say this as, the complement of the union of A and B. It is everything that is not in the union of A and B. Well, remember, the, the union was the figure of 8-bit, so it's everything on the outside of that, which is just the 1 that we have. In this case, it was everything that is rolling a number which is not even or prime. And you can then do the same thing, the complement of the intersection of A and B. So in this case, it would be everything that is not prime and even. Well, this is the stuff that is prime and even. So everything on the outside of that would be not prime and even. So we've got one, three, four, five, and six. Yes? So what about A union, not B, without the brackets? So A union complement B. Yeah. So this is allowed to be the union of everything that A has and everything that B is not B. Not B is everything that's on the outside of B. Because it says it's everything that A has joined with everything that B has. It doesn't matter that this bit is inside B because it's inside A. Union allows there to be that overlap. Intersection is different. Intersection is things at the same time. This has got an or sort of sense to it. It can either be in there or it could be in there. And it can be in both. Yeah. Because it is not in B. Yeah, it's not in B. It's this time the people were getting married was A and the complement of B. And the complement of B is everything on the outside of B. Yeah? Obviously, don't say to other mathematicians, oh, well, like, these, these are the ones that were getting married, so that makes no sense. Okay, 
Now, um, there's some more complicated Venn diagrams. You'll have to you'll have to be shading these things in because surprise, the printer hasn't hasn't done a very good job of this. And this is me wanting to step this up to like year two Venn diagrams. I don't imagine you'll have seen many triple Venn diagrams before. It's so simple that we think it's complicated. Okay, so I'm just going to give you 30 seconds. I want you to decide what you think these would be in set notation, and then we'll go through them, and then we'll do three more, and then we'll go through them, and then three more. So you can either write them down or you can just talk to each other about them. What do you think these would be in set notation? It's fun. No, So We're just going to do these three, and then we'll do, and then you can have. I mean, you can start thinking about them if you want. Okay. Okay, we've had long enough on these first ones. Zube, what do you think this first one is? Imagine C wasn't there. What would you tell me it was? A intersection B. C seems to C's got nothing to do with it. Okay, it doesn't seem like C has got anything to do with it. That's a trick question. It's not a trick question. That area, if I was trying to describe that area, I would say that's the intersection of A and B. If I'm trying to describe that, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about C. We're just trying to describe the, the most efficient way of describing this region inside these, this set diagram that we've got here. The most efficient way of describing that is A and B, A intersection B. It just happens that some of it is inside C as well. So what do we think this one here would be, Tambir? The union of A and B. Good. It's just going to be nice and simple. It's the union of A and B. There's that kind of figure of eight shape that we've got there. Now C is coming into play. Okay. What do we think this one is? A intersection B intersection C. It's the one area of that diagram that is A, B, and C. If you lived inside that little area, you would be a member of all three of those families. I need to stop doing this family thing. I don't think it's, I don't think it's going to work. Okay, but you get what I'm saying, right? Right. So next page, you've got three more of them to have a think about. Um, if you finish those three, you can think about the next ones. But I'll give you thirty seconds to have a little go at these. Don't worry, you're going to do more practice in a moment if you find these tricky. So just have a think. You don't have to remember. You don't have to mention all three letters. Okay. Yes, absolutely. But it, uh, yeah, it is. It is and. I just like using the posh language because it makes me feel extra fancy. So that would be a union or an intersection? An intersection. Because it's, well, I'm going to go through this, this bit now. So what do we think this first one is? A union, a union and the complement of C. A, no, it's A and not C. Oh, 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 o
So if you think about this, the way I look at this is like I see the shape and I think, okay, well, it basically, it looks like A, but it also looks like it, the C part of it has been removed. So I'm saying, okay, well, the, that means it's not in C. So this area, anything that's inside here is inside A and it's also not inside C. If I wrote A union, not C, A union, not C would be the union of, or it would be all of A and it would be everything that is not inside C as well. It would be all of this. That would be the union of A and not C. Remember, union is everything shared all together. You look at the two things and you just shade both of those two things. So that one is A and not C. What do we think this second one here is, Hamza A? A and B. Uh, and not C. And not C. So it has to be, when you have the intersection, it means these three things all need to be true at the same time. So it has to be inside A, has to be inside B, but it's not allowed to be inside this section that we've got here. That's why it's just that weird kind of part of the, of the shape that we've got. Who thinks they can describe what this one is? Hamza? Um, I'm guessing with you bracket A union B union C and then put a complement. Yes, it's the complement of the union of A, B and C. The union of A, B and C is the marriage thing doesn't work anymore. <laughs> but, but you've got all three of these things all shared, and we're saying it's not in that. Okay, So you have to build it up slowly. You say, this is the thing you're thinking about, but it's not that. It's the other side of that thing instead. Okay, <laughs> So we're going to look at three more of these that do get a little bit more complicated as we go here. Let's see if we can. Don't worry, I'll do it. You've got three more, so see if you can have a go at these three, and then we'll... There should be a spare set of these for you on the table, but if not, I'll, I'll get you some. We just started probability, okay? Oh, oh. No, that's going to have to Yep. Yep. Is that one right? Yep. Yeah. The can you see it on the head? Not really on here. Yeah. Have a look at it on there. I'll draw around the outline of it to make it a bit easier. Okay, let's talk about these then. First one's nice and easy. What's the first one, Sufian? Pardon? The complement of A, yeah. Just because it looks, because we've got stuff all around there, we can just say the complement of A. Um, Muzikir, what did you get for this one? Um, a intersect, not... Uh, a intersect the complement of A intersect B intersect C. He did brackets A, he did B and A, I think you did a letter and he did an A as well. Yeah. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Like this? Yeah. Uh, the A is wrong, you put an A. Wait, why don't I put an A? It, you're right, still, but... It's right, yeah. Did anyone do this in a different way? You did this. I, there are often multiple ways of doing them. Some of them are more complicated than others. But this, I think, is the, the simplest way of doing it. Because we're saying it's inside A. Oh, but look, there's this little bit here that we're not allowed to put in. And this little bit here looks like it's the bit that B and C share. OK, so that's why we have to bracket that, because we're saying the bit that B and C share, we have to bracket it and say it's not that bit. 
I kind of love this language. I think it's really interesting. <laughs> and so for this last one, Sufjan, you said what you what, what did, you, did you say for this last one? <laughs> okay, not Sufian then. Yeah, A, intersect. Intersect, not B. And intersect, not C. Okay, good. There's, that's one way of saying this. There's another way of saying this one. Muzik here. A, shh, 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 intersect. Yep. Brackets, B, union, C, and not that. A and not B and not C, A and B union C. Yeah, good. And actually, let's just quickly think about what we've just said is equivalent here. I'm, I'm getting a bit annoyed today with people that are talking all the time, so they need to cut it out. This, Rayhan, I've literally just said I'm getting a bit annoyed and you're continuing to talk. These two things must be the same as each other, right? So let's just quickly check that out with the Venn diagram. So we've said... I'm just going to look at B and C here. Not B and not C means that it's everything on the outside. B or C is the figure of 8-bit in the middle. And then the fact that it's not is everything on the outside. So these two things that I've highlighted in green are equivalent to each other and mean exactly the same thing. Now, you need to get good at drawing, drawing Venn diagrams because drawing Venn diagrams is the basis of many, many, many probability problems in statistics, okay? It's the basis of many of these problems. Um, Ishtiak can come back to those pages later and you can write them up, okay? So, some examples here. Venn diagrams can either contain the specific outcomes in each set. Like I just said, it could contain the numbers that come up on the dice or it could contain... I don't know, words of representing what the outcomes are. It might say like shoe, tree, whatever, whatever the thing is that's being sorted. It could contain the number of items in the set. It could contain the frequencies, because sometimes we want to know how many things are in a particular area. Um, maybe we're talking about students, and it was how many students study French, how many students study German. You actually just put the number of students inside that. Or it could contain the probability of being in that set. And that's probably the most common one that we'll be coming across, is the probability of things being contained in that set. So this says, a card is selected at random from a pack of 52 playing cards. Let A be the event that the card is an ace and D, the event that the card is a diamond. So I'm hoping you know how cards work. I have to start off with my universal set. I can't really draw that symbol very well, but that's my best attempt. The universal set means the whole deck of cards. OK? Have I done it the right way around? Yeah, I have, like a kind of a three sort of thing, Zai. And I'm going to have a loop that represents A, a loop that represents D, because as soon as we draw this, it should make everything become easier. Um, so A represents the number of aces that there are. And there are four aces. But how many of those aces are diamonds? One. So there's going to be a one in the middle, and then there'll be a three here, because there are three aces that are not. How many diamond cards are there in total? 13. 13, and one of them is an ace. So 12 of them would be here. And then there would be 39 on the outside for the hearts, the clubs, and the spades. And there's 13 of each of those. Hopefully, these all add up to 52. Yeah. What, have I done that right then? Oh, because the aces are already in there. So we better do it the proper way. We better do. Um, <laughs> Yeah, that's right, 36. So there are 36 cards that are neither aces nor diamonds. Okay, don't rush like I've just done there. So now it's really easy. If we want to find out, if we want to find out the probability that it is ace and diamond, well, that one's easy because we know that it's just one out of 52, and it comes from that middle section that we've got there. The second bit is saying the probability is the union of aces and diamonds. So remember the union is that kind of figure of eight shape that we've got there. So we've got 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 out of 52. Obviously we could simplify these fractions, but I'm just being lazy and slow. Um, the probability that it is not in A, the complement of A, well, A is four, so it must be all the other ones here, which is 48 out of 52. 
and then for part D, that it's not A and it's in D. So what does that look like? What's, what number is that? 12, it's the moon shape of this bit here. Not A, but it is a diamond. It's saying that it is uh, not an ace, but it is a diamond. So it's 12 out of 52. Now, obviously, you could have done these probably without a Venn diagram, but I'm trying to get us into the habit of Venn diagrams being a useful tool to help us visualize what might be happening in something, OK? Because often, they're not going to be things that we know as real life as, as cards and things like that. So we've got intersection, union, complement, and then this kind of moon shape sort of thing that we have at the end for this one. Can I go on to the next bit? Yeah? OK. A little reminder before we read this question. If events A and B are independent, the probability of A and B is the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. You will have come across that in year 12. You also will have come across that probably in year 9, where you talk about if you do two events and they are independent from each other, you just multiply the probabilities. So for example, flipping a coin and getting tails, and then rolling a dice and getting the number 6, that's a probability of a half. That's a probability of a sixth. If you were trying to say, what's the probability that I flip a coin and get tails and then roll a dice and get a sixth, you just multiply them, and the probability of that is a twelfth. Because they are independent, the dice and the coin don't have any relationship with each other. And we we're about to start breaking that when we make them conditional. The other thing is if two events are mutually exclusive, don't worry too much about the word mutually, but just worry about the word exclusive. Exclusive means cannot happen at the same time. So the probability of A and B is equal to 0, because they can't happen at the same time. It means if one of them happens, the other one can't have happened. And the probability of the unions is just the probability of each one separately added together. And you can think about this as a Venn diagram for mutually exclusive. That would be the probability of A, and that would be the probability of B. Why are they not overlapping each other? Because they are not independent, because they are, cannot happen at the same time. They're mutually exclusive. So the probability of them, the union of them, is just that one added to that one. There's no worry about any of the overlap that you might have there. Okay. So we've been told the probability of A is 0.3, the probability of B is 0.4, and the probability of A and B is 0.25. And it first of all says, explain why events A and B are not independent. Why aren't they independent? Because the probability of A times by the probability of B is not equal to the probability of A and B. If they were independent, that is the thing that says, like, rolling a dice, flipping a coin. And you can see that because the probability of A is 0.3, the probability of B is 0.4, and the probability of A and B is 0.25. And clearly, 0.12 does not equal 0.25. So these are not independent events. They have some kind of relationship to each other, right? Part B of the question, we've got some extra information that's given to us. Given also that the probability of C is 0.2 and that events A and C are mutually exclusive and that events B and C are independent, draw a Venn diagram to illustrate the events A, B, and C, showing the probabilities for each region. So suddenly it goes, whoa, OK, a lot more stuff is happening in this question. But we just take it slowly, and we think carefully about all of the things that are going to happen, OK? So we've got three loops that we're going to need to draw. Previously, when we have just shown you with them three loops, we had loop one, loop two, loop three, like this. Mine's not going to look like that, so don't draw it. What is going to be different about our one? There's something they've told us. A and C are not going to overlap because they are mutually exclusive. Look, mutually exclusive, they don't overlap at all. So I'm going to have A here, and I'm going to have C here, and then I'm going to have B overlapping them both. Because B is allowed to overlap with both of them. A and C, they're not allowed to overlap. I always leave the intersections a little bit small. So if you draw yours, if you make these any bigger, then you're doing a better job than I am. And what do we know here? Well, they've also told us 
that B and C are independent. So as soon as you hear independent, you can say to yourself, great, I can use this law that we've got here. This is in the formula book, by the way. Okay, this law is in the formula book, but you should, it kind of just makes sense. So if they've told me that B and C are independent, I can say that I can work out the probability of B and C by doing the probability of B times the probability of C. Because they've told me that B is 0 0.4 and C is 0 0.2. So B and C is 0 0.8. 0.08, sorry. So I can start to fill some things into the diagram and see if I've got any missing regions that I don't know how to fill in. Well, I've just worked this out, 0.08, so I'm going to just put it inside here, 0.08. This is why you want your intersections to be a bit bigger than mine. Now, I'll give you a chance just to finish writing that because I want to make sure you're, you're able to hear what I'm saying here. Who thinks they've got an idea of what might be uh, the, the next sensible thing to start filling into the diagram? And if you could try and describe it using set language would be good. Hamza? Um, we can put uh, 0 0.25 into uh, A, which be Good. You can put 0 0.25 into the intersection of A and B. 0 0.25, because they've told us that. And what next? Really, the, uh, we know that the probability of B and C is different. Good. The probability of A and not B, the intersection of A and the complement of B, I'm not expecting you to say it in that ridiculous over-the-top way, has to be 0.05, because remember, the whole of that loop needs to be 0.3. So what does this bit here need to be? It all needs to be 0, this all needs to be 0 0.2, so this needs to be 0 0.12. And what does this whole thing here need to be? So 0 0.07 is this bit that we've got here. And then we need to fill in one more thing, otherwise we wouldn't get the marks. The outside, the not A, not B, not C bit. It's one minus all of that that you've got there. 0 0.43? OK, I'm just trusting you. I don't know if that's a good idea, though. 0 0.43. OK, so that's the kind of uh, Venn diagram that we've got. And now that would probably be worth four marks, maybe five marks. Okay, so the Venn diagram looks like it's easy because it's just a diagram, but it's often worth a lot of marks. So it's really important you do it, you do it right. If you don't put a box on the outside, you automatically are going to lose two marks because you won't have that probability and you won't have the box. Technically, we should have that kind of universal symbol set that we've got there. If you don't like drawing that, you can use the letter S instead. Okay, you can use the letter S if you don't like doing that. Now all we need to find out is the union of C and A and the intersection of the complement of B, which isn't as hard as I've made it sound, OK? So we need to say it's the union of C and these bits. So when I think about union, I will look at this thing and I will just say, great, well, it's all of that, because I know that this thing that's getting married to the other thing, all of that is going to be shared. Then I need to think of A and not B. Which number is A and not B? 0 0.05. 0 0.05. So the two bits that I've highlighted in green here represent the union of this whole thing that we've got, right? So the answer for that just becomes this thing is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.05, it's just 0 0.25. Is that a hand up, Sadia? No? OK. So you've got a little exam question that you can try at the top of the next page, which I'd like you guys to have a go at. And then I'm going to set you some questions from exercise 2A. Any questions on this before you try the exam question about how we did any of these things? Hey, sir. You know how so, um, something is mutually exclusive? That means it can't happen. It means mutually exclusive looks like this. It means they cannot happen at the same time. So, so how can the probability be 0 0.25? 
because um, A and C are mutually exclusive. Yes. Not, not, not this, this whole thing here. OK, it's something that's slightly different. You get mutually, ex I mean, mutually exclusive would be like me saying raining and not raining, or like you being in the lesson and not being in the lesson. Yeah? 